And now, the bonfire with Big Jay Okerson and Dan Soder. I was taken with the spirit, Jay. That's why I stood up. It's the bonfire. Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big Jay Okerson. Hey. And, and this is Thursday. Yeah, this is a Thursday show. The first, fourth show of the week that we've ever done. It's weird. I'm still feeling all the pain from Sunday. Yeah, it's weird that you're hurting like that. Still on a Thursday. <laughs> Thursday shows are the bo- the lost tapes of the bonfire. It's a Frankenstein. That's right. This is, I hope you guys have been enjoying the uh, first four show a week bonfire schedule. Yes. It'd be funny if we find out by Wednesday we had nothing to talk about. The yeah. show's done. We give up or we're just getting into a super fight where we don't talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. You guys go, we have a third of a Thursday show where they're cool, and then now we can't get them in the same room together like Axel and Slash. <laughs> then it just melts down <laughs> yeah. hard. The topic on Tuesday really blew stuff up. <laughs> I don't know if Jay should have came drenched in dad, Dan's dad's ashes. <laughs> it's like a time warp. Um, we walked in the, I walked in before you. Mm-hmm. I always, uh, love when there's performers in the bowl and they call it the fish bowl. They call it the fish bowl. When you first walk in the Sirius XM in the lobby, there's a, there's an all glass room like they, like the kind of prison they keep Magneto in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, a Hannibal Lecter. Yes, exactly. Like a serial killer. It looks like a serial killer's prison. Have your alarm stop screaming? Oh, would you like me to do my acoustic version of the murder? <laughs> I killed this man. <laughs> the Hannibal Lecter's doing a town hall at Sirius. Yeah, I heard Lecter's doing Unplugged up in the fishbowl. He goes, I bet you didn't expect me to do this one. Hello, Clarice. Oh, oh he's doing shit. the hits. Oh, shit. But he's doing the hits. Sometimes it's awesome, people, like Chicago with, give me a heart, make it real. Uh-huh. <laughs> Rob Thomas in Chicago, and then sometimes it's um people that we have no fucking clue who they are, but my favorite part of that is there's always people in an entourage that act like you should know who everyone is. Does that make sense? Oh, are they like, shush, is El Wapo. The man is telling the story of what it was like to watch the sun come up over the Catalina. He, uh, no, there's Can a- you be quiet, please? Los Guitardos is playing yeah, in the other room. El Electrica <laughs> is about to dance. <laughs> I was walking down the stairs and this guy was blocking the stairwell. I was up in the office, the comedy offices, and I was walking down to come to the studio. This guy's on his fucking phone with a camera blocking the stairwell. And I'm like, hey, man, excuse me. El Muvo. Uh, yeah. I go, hey, man, excuse me. And he's like, wait, pa, wait, pa. I said, man, you want to take that out. He goes, hey, what's up? What, man? It was his dad. He goes, what, man? I go, you're on the stairs. Move. And he goes, I'm taking pictures. And I didn't know who it was. <laughs> and I was just too mad. I was zero to 30, Dan, where I just muttered to myself as I walked down the hallway. And then I got here and Fugelsang was in the studio and I go, cocksucker out loud. <laughs> that's who I am as a person. I'm a dad. I'm an angry dad all the time. And he's like, can I help you? I go, sorry, man. I'm all fueled up from El Wapo and his fucking. I'm all fueled up. Fueled up. Fueled up. Um, I'm looking at this website header here, the Beatles channel on Sirius XM. Yeah. Not to take a shot at the company. If I was more of a Beatles fan, I guess that would be the greatest thing in the world to me, but a full channel for one band, huh? Well, they do that. They do. I know uh, Billy Joel, they do. A lot. Springsteen. There's a couple of them. Eminem. No. There's no Eminem channel. So I thought Shade 45. Shade 45 is he's like, you know. Oh, you're saying just exclusively playing I the music. I think that's playing only Beatles. Lou, is that what it is? Yes, that's what it is. It only plays Beatles. Yes. Does E Street, does the E Street channel only play Springsteen? Yes. I no, they also. They play influence, uh, people that are related to it somehow. It's more like a Pandora thing. Okay, so the Beatles are just straight up, Channel 18 is just Beatles. I'm not sure. I think maybe people that co- cover Beatles songs get to be on there too. Cause like, oh, oh, that makes sense. That'd be pretty cool, but I mean like. We should just do a cover just to get on there. I've got their music runs the gamut so much that you're like, where the fuck do you chime in? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, we all live in a yellow submarine. Then it goes some trippy dip. Yeah. Fucking, oh, Jesus. This is when we did a bunch of acid. <laughs> oh, this is right after John kicked the shit out of his wife. It's a little bit more of a slasher one. Um, people Jay- really like to forget that though. John Thank Lennon, that John Lennon used to beat up on his wife, his first wife. Not Yoke. 
Not yoked. Yo, you think she just grabbed his fist? She's like, Psh, choose wisely, John. You know who also <laughs> make your next words <laughs> very important because they're going to be etched on your gravestone. Mister Renan, are you familiar <laughs> of the story about Eagle and the snake? He goes, Yoko, you gotta let go of my hand. You know, that's my songwriting hand. You're breaking my hand. <laughs> this is why, why John never beat up Yoko, only his first white wife. He, he throws, he throws a punch and she like, without even seeing it, she just cuts his arm off with a fan and is like, Ooh. Oh, uh. Would you like to get back in bed naked? <laughs> he goes, Oh! My fucking hand is bleeding! My bloody hand is bleeding! My bloody hand is bloody! <laughs> my bloody hand is bloody, bloody! My bloody, 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 bloody! <laughs> Oh no, well. I'm having a British stroke. <laughs> <laughs> bloody, 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 bloody. Blickety, bloody, bloops. <laughs> Hibbly, uh, jibbly, ding dongs. Yeah, the British rapper texts me happy birthday. And, really? Yeah, and it just made me laugh because I was just thinking about it. Like, oh, I got pops in socks and rocks and bucks. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, and Dan dated a, a British rapper is the funniest thing. It wasn't. Uh, her body yeah. was great. No, she, I mean, she, her face was great. She's very beautiful. She was a British rapper. She's very beautiful. She's a very beautiful lady who is very sensual. I wish you could say I'd never seen her. I should do a picture of her. I don't think. I think I did on Instagram. Did you? Yeah. Oh, the gram? Oh I, oh, I popped up the gram. Um, you checked out on the gram? But back to the Beatles channel. Oh, wait. Back to the glass. The well, saying, that's what's going on. Sirius is big on events and, and special channels. And when we walked in, there was some suave... Some bitch out there. I mean, it definitely wasn't Rico, but it was in the area, the vicinity of. What was what's the El El Tito Pantalones? I am El Slacks. <laughs> Mark B. Oh, and I okay. don't know what the B stands for. What is that? Like an AA meeting? Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hi, I'm Mark B. They're like, hola. <laughs> I started merengue when I was a young boy. I feel DJing happening in this, and some kind of shitty like. Uh, oh, we got. I, I know, Lou. You're gonna find. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Really? I'm looking for my friend, Michael. Is Michael here? Stop oh. for a second, Lou. You know, here's the thing about that kind of music. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, took, I, know, I know you caught the rhythm. I'm sorry. That they took every 90s car commercial and took the music from that and turned it into a genre. I, I'm just wondering. <laughs> Come on down there. Da, 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 da. Tom Sullivan's Nissan's giving him away. What were you going to say about that music? Um, it, it's like they're having like some sort of a town hall in there or whatever, or uh, interview with them. I'm like, about what? What do you want to talk about? Influence, dude. He but goes, I'm he goes horns. They're like, oh, like, what kind? He's like, car horns. Yeah. I, I grew up in Mexico. So <laughs> the thump of a heart. The, I make music to produce anxiety. They play right now? They're freaking out. That's it. That's <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Did you leave your front door open? <laughs> it also sounds like it could be a Fruit by the Foot commercial. You left the house. Kids, your parents don't want you to have it. If you, I wish you could just find his music. He's it's so like, anxious. Wait, wait, wait. Can we get some lyrics up on him? Translate Oh. Yeah, but then right there, you're kind of like, everyone in the studio is like, oh, all right. <laughs> I'm not against this kind of music being made. I'm just saying, what do you need to interview him about? All right, they go. And, uh, what's your blood pressure like? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Always through the roof. Uh, my music is very, how you say, hopped up. Yeah. Uh, what I like to do is um, take a, a rag, I uh, put gasoline, and then I smoke methamphetamines, huff the gas, <laughs> right as well. <laughs> <laughs> Mark B, should we drop the beat now? He goes, no. No yet. Faster. What? <laughs> faster. Is it, Mr. B, it's impossible to play faster. Oh, yeah, what does he look like, Christine? Because I think I saw him. He oh, you like, saw him, buddy. It's exactly looked, who you thought it was. Oh, no, he looked like the guy in, um, he looked like one of the members of Dick in the Box of Long Island. He's on the Pitbull channel. That's exciting. Okay. 
They're playing him on the pit bull channel. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, he is a handsome guy. Let me see. He always, I always love these photos. Po- Can we do those photos where we're doing oh, the, the prayer, hands? Where we're yeah. doing the prayer hands, but we're looking away like, nah, man. I'm Mama not praying. Cita. Mama Cita, I must have one half hour of no sex to pray. This jacket is a piece me poor fucking. He's almost like the teller. Made it on my body. How I design clothing is I take a horse narcotic, go to sleep, and I wake up with the jacket sewn on me. Can we take bets? And Jacob, will you, is he still going on out there? Can we take bets on what his shoes look like? There's some sort of alligator. And we'll see who's closer. Oh, you're going with like a fancy shoe. Yes. Hmm. An alligator. Uh, you know, it's not a bad guess. I was going to say some kind of a fucking several color... Goofy, puffy sneaker. I will completely bet against that. You're going gator. Total gators. And so we'll almost break this down into a flashy yes. sneaker or a dress, like heavy dress shoe. Jacob, can you go check it out? Um, I'm always amazed by these guys, like Mark B. And uh, who is the guy that we made fun of? We've made fun of several oh. Latin artists that we don't know about. I know. We really don't get them. We should get into them. One thing about the bonfire, we do not get Hispanic <laughs> artists. <laughs> no, but I'm saying the point is, is it's, it always amazes me. It's like um, a popular soccer player in London, mm-hmm. and they can't walk anywhere. And then here, we're like, I don't know who that goofy asshole is. Oh, sure. It's like in the Tejano world, this the, guy's yes, fucking... Yes, exactly. Like, Mark B is like, probably, women would start crying if they saw him. You saw Mark fucking B today? First off, why did you not just kiss him? <laughs> he is a beautiful man. I asked you to tell me when there's going to be somebody good in the fishbowl. In the fishbowl? I got in the elevator today, and I'm wearing a Queens of the Stone Age shirt, and I have my headphones in, and this guy, this old Jewish guy goes, ah, da, 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 da. I took my headphones out. I'm like, excuse me? Because he, he pointed at my shirt. And he goes, Queens of the Stone Age, you work with him? I'm like, no, I'm just a fan. He goes, oh, I, I had a chance to... Own their last two albums and I passed and I'm really regretting it right now. And I go, oh, I go. They went to Matador Records. Who are you guys? And he's like, blah, blah, blah. he like said the name and I'm like, I don't know what that record. Is. <laughs> but he's like, yeah, I think it's because uh, it's I had a weird me more money. Right? Yeah, he goes, I work with only Mark B now, <laughs> but he's Jewish. I'm like, why are you talking like that? <laughs> he goes, it's how you say infectious, you yeah. boy. He goes, ah, you stupid schmuck. <laughs> I think I know who that is. Who was that guy? I think you ran into Steve Leeds. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Steve Leeds? He's oh, like one of the big he's guys He's head here. of our talent department. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it was, I like you putting the blame. You did a little bit of victim blaming there, Dan. But because it was based off of your interaction with him beyond that. Yeah. If you go, some little Jewish guy like grumbles at me like, rah, 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 rah. He goes, so I take my headphones out and say, what? Because I was like, well, he heard like a grumbling because <laughs> yeah. you had your headphones in. Yeah, yeah. it's probably because uh, Kendrick Lamar was playing in my ears as he went. I had a chance to work with him. Yeah. Go, this guy's running behind my car screaming my name. And it's just like, what the fuck, dude? I can't hear. I'm always that. That's, that's, if you want to know where. You're a victim blamer? Yeah, I'm a victim blamer. Where I go, what the fuck did you do? Why'd you do that? <laughs> what about your thing, though? What about your thing, though? Because I had no idea what he was... I just knew it was like two well-dressed guys pointing at my shirt, and I was like, oh, you guys want to go? You guys want to rock? I know. <laughs> you guys oh, want to have a fucking debate right uh, now about Queens of Stone Age? You're about to see 36 t- floors of terror if you fucking get a, come after me. Um, yeah, but the guy... It wasn't him. It was like... The guy still works for a record company, because the guy was like... Oh, we could have had him at a record company. I was like, we're a record company. But that guy was with him. Steve Lee is like he's always giving a wink. He's like, hell are you? Hey. He's, like, he's got a slick guy face, right? Yeah, that's like, not, that wasn't him. Giving a little winkaroo? That's not him. Oh, look, um, at, look at look at Jacob and Lou's buttholes tightening up. That guy can end your career in one swoop. Can he? Can he just come down and go, you don't work here anymore? No way. He's a buddy of mine. <laughs> I like Lou. Lou uh, you goosed him up Lou, a little bit? Uh, what happened? Did you go out and show him Stu? <laughs> no. He would probably uh, not be my friend after that. Oh, yeah? yeah. He's our good stewing. I don't know. I feel like that's Steve Lee. Like he gets a little tutored up when he when he drinks. Oh, absolutely. He goes, do you want to know something? I watched Madonna take a shit in 1980. <laughs> How do you? What? He goes, he goes she wanted me to. He <laughs> goes, I'm backstage. It's the garden. You know. I got enough blow to kill a mule. I tell when I tell Madge's friend that they bring me in the back. They go, Madge wants you to watch her go. I went on stage. They went, 
No, number two. <laughs> Anyways, I did. He goes, I think he still used old man terms. He goes, and then she squats on the floor and takes a BM right in front of him. <laughs> he takes a, he uses BM. He goes like this. I mean, I huffed two fat rails. Next thing I know, the most popular <laughs> artist in the world is taking I can, what I can only call a thin BM in front of me. <laughs> so I'm cutting up these lines and she's holding her belly and dancing. And I go, Madonna, do you have to make? <laughs> yeah. Do you have to make? Do you have to make BM? Do you have to make? That's my grandma used to say to me. Do you have to make? Do you have to make? Don't no, just make. Really? Yeah. Just like create. <laughs> do you have like, to create? You go, it's so biblical sounding. You go, not right now, Nana. <laughs> I need to make. I must go make. She goes, my Jason's such an artist. And you're like, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I have to go make. I have to make. Is Where's that, the, where's that a term from? Where did that come from? To make? There's no one in the room heard that. No before. one's ever heard that. Yeah, that's all we used to say. Just Wait, make. Not, that's not, all we used to say. Not BM, what, like just the word you make. Like, do you make? have to go make? You have to go make? My, my grandmother and my mother used to say yeah. that to me. You all have to go time. make? Yeah, I mean, we had BM. Jacob, a couple old Jews. BM was ours. I had an aunt, my aunt, sorry, my grandmother's sister, which is, she'd be like, oh, I just had the best BM. Oh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Christine sucked a metal dick this morning. Just here. turns out, oh, robot. Uh, Hi, I'm Christine. I'm the new card dealer here in the season. <laughs> Everyone. You have to hit. Dealer has to hit on a soft 17. <laughs> All right, what's your name? Put your chips in. He goes, how about a round of applause for Wingtron, who was dealing before me? Okay, now he had nothing up the sleeves, none on the wrists. All right, you guys go. ready to go. And if you have to make a BM, uh, if you have to BM, come now. <laughs> if anybody has to make before we start, I'll t- make. <laughs> Can we bring that back? We got to bring that back. Make? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to make. Can you go to the bathroom like, what do you have to make? Yeah, I go, no, I just got a sissy. I go like this. No, I, yeah, you go, do you have to sissy or make? You have to sis or make? Yeah, I got a sissy make. I got a sissy while I make. Yeah, it was, it's sort of a sissy make combo. Yeah. It's like sissies coming out of where make comes from. <laughs> Just the word make is so, uh. Weird. Omni, like, yeah. uh, pra- is that the right word? Like, it's, it's so, it's such a big grandiose term. Like, are you, are you gonna go make? Like, what? what? What do you mean, what are we gonna do? Am I gonna make? And here's the thing, it never came around, it never changed form though, the word make. It's never like, uh, he goes, is anybody, are you gonna be out of there fast? No one goes like, no, I'm making. Like that yeah. doesn't, that was. Can you please stop yelling at me? It stops me from making. <laughs> when you, when you get me nervous, I can't make right. <laughs> You're making my make crawl back up. I, maybe we should start calling it making it right. <laughs> I'm gonna go make it right. Anybody have to make? I gotta go make. Um, did you look at his shoes? Yeah, uh, they were. Jay was right. Well, Fuck. not. They were big black sneakers with some weird flap over them. That's fair enough. A gaudy, a, a gaudy sneaker. That's what my call was. You don't want to give it. You want to victim blame again. <laughs> Solid black. I'm getting the itch to victim blame. Ooh, you know what really make this Thursday better? Because I could really victim blame right now. He, uh, well, I don't know why every time the word make in every sentence we're saying stands out to me so much. Now. <laughs> just poop. He was just saying poop. Make. Oh, you got to poop? I like to make. Don't be gross. We're at work. I always thought that was really funny when you're, like, when you're little and you hear a word for pooping or pissing that isn't one of those and it makes you laugh harder. Oh, yeah. Because you're used to the dirty words. You like the dirty words. But then you hear make and you're like, what the fuck did... I've had, I've seen people call it, like, when they were kids, like, a boom boom. That is, uh, I say that now for dumb people. <laughs> like, I say that as I'm joking around. Like, if I'm with someone, I can, I can make a boom boom. <laughs> because that's clearly for any, like, you can't be older than five years old. Did you hear growing up? No. My mom said shit. Trish was, <laughs> <laughs> Trish is, you know, she's like, do you have to take a dump? And you're like, yeah, it was a dump most of the time. It's like, what's up? We're, before we go in the store, you have to rip a shit because yeah. there's no bathrooms in there. She goes, hey, uh, if you're going to just knock one out and do it now. I go, what does that mean? She goes, well, past 13 means jerk off. Now it means shit. <laughs> yeah. Dan, you got to go split some logs or what's yeah. up? We cutting? What are you doing? You cutting? You going? What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I used to shit with the door. It was just me and my mom. I'd go to the door with the bathroom open for a long time. Till you were how old? Till we got, I got my mom's boyfriend moved in with us. How old were you? It's like nine. Ah, uh, no, Dennis, her boyfriend Dennis never moved in. <laughs> and then started, Dennis used to pay you to keep the door open? He goes, like, yes, he goes. Give me a couple bucks if you keep the door open while you, t- while you make. Also, uh, if you wouldn't mind eating some more fiber so it's a little tougher for you. <laughs> 
I wouldn't mind. I like to see a bit of struggle in your face. Yeah. I just want to see that little vein in your tiny neck pop out. Dennis, get out of here. I'm making. Dennis, I'm making boom boom. <laughs> you combine them. Make is such a fucking weird one. That has to be. It's something Jewishy. Does that think mom mom's sort of Jewishy? Did you call your grandmother mom mom? No. All right. It's just grandma. Yeah, okay. they both used to say you got to make. So that is a Jewish term. Because Lou, you don't. What do they say in the Whitsky household? <laughs> oh, Lou's mom used to take him and squeeze him over a toilet. She goes, you can go sure. make a food rain? <laughs> she goes, you and Will got to split this. Yeah. You and Stu got a couple brown bombers on deck? Yeah. She goes, here's the deal. I'm going to feed you all both a bowl of chili. Whoever <laughs> goes first is the oldest. Something racist. <laughs> yeah. You drop some end friends off at the pool? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Mom. Mom, fuck you. We're in Jersey. I'm going to smoke inside a grocery store while you guys shit. Because <laughs> I want you to walk through those plastic shreds to get through there and take a shit. <laughs> Which one of y'all is going to go first? Because then you get to hang out with me <laughs> as I get my heart blood, as I get my fucking blood pressure checked and none of those sleeves in the store. Was your mom a cigarette smoker? I thought I was six. She quit when you were six? Yeah. Do you remember anything of her smoking years? I just find it weird when I find pictures of her with like a cigarette where she's like, hey, yeah. how long did your mom smoke till? Oh, like her early 50s, I think. So you grew up with her smoking? Yeah. Because you still... And you... When did you start smoking cigarettes? 23. Really? So as a teenager, you never stole cigarettes? It's murdering me. <laughs> it started at 23. That's crazy. At 23, I already was like, when am I going to quit? Because I've been yeah. smoking since I was... So I, I think I had my first cigarette when I was 12, and I started consistently smoking when I was 14. Yeah, it, yeah, that's when you're supposed to. I mean, I don't know if you're supposed to do No, that. it's terrible. But I'll tell you me. this. I guess you're right. Technically, you're supposed to when I did it. Yeah, no, you nailed it. You're making an adult decision to start using a tobacco product. Mine was like, it became, uh, the summer I was 12 turning 13, it became like the thing that summer where everyone was like, you can go to this park, we got cigarettes, and you're like, well, I'll go, and you like, smoke a cigarette, and you're like, this is a pretty good day. This is, I remember being 13 years old, and they used to do replays on USA of Doogie Howser and Wings. And I would watch two episodes of Wings and then two episodes of Doogie Hauser. In between Wings and Doogie Hauser, I was fucking 13. I went and smoked a Marlboro Red by myself. Like a nervous man. That's like I, fucking hilarious. And then I came back in and was so dizzy I had to lay down during Doogie Hauser. And then Wearing I, a Niners jacket and shorts I picture. Dude. <laughs> Cold. It was in the, it was, it was during this, it was summer vacation. Okay. And then, uh, the weirder part that I remember is I remember smoking the Marlboro Red, coming in, being dizzy, laying down for a little bit, and then just going and grabbing my wrestling toys and sitting Indian style in front of the TV at like 12. Holy shit. And that was like one of the last times I played. Yeah, I can't like look at anything in life with, with that kind of, where I do doing something very, very adult. And then very child. The, that's what I'm saying. That was like one of the last times I remember like playing. You, you told that story when you were with your G.I. Joes and you're like, Thinking about what was it, like fingering a girl, and you're like, I can't. It wasn't even. I was just saying in my mind, it was crazy that I wanted to like hook up with chicks, and I was like still, yeah, having full blown wrestling match with my GI Joes. Although still, the concept of playing with you know, the GI Joes I had sounds alluring. To me. I don't know why. It still does to me too. I was like, I pulled I'm out you, a whole ring, and I'm telling you, Hasbro figure. I'm telling you, I could play. Like I, I would yeah. make them like kick and yes. do whatever oh, shit. Dude, I listen. I know your imagination. I, I still fight. want to do it. That's some John Woo shit you probably had going on in your head. It was always the Defend the woman's honor. <laughs> oh, so Just like I'll always defend your honor, Dan Soder. Thank you. Um, should we oh. take our first break here? I think we should. Should we take our first break? Okay. I don't know. You're the strong one. All right. It's the bonfire. The Lost Games. And now back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Seriously, that, that could be any fight song. I have no idea. Is that Arizona's Lou? The University of Arizona. Wildcats fight song, yeah. That really is. That's my alma mater's fight song. No fucking idea whatsoever. It's the Bonfire, Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM95. I'm Dan Soder. That's Big Jay Okerson. Dope lyrics. Yeah, bro. They kind of wrote it from a place of inspiration. It's the Bonfire Lost Tapes, our first Thursday episode. Mixed and moshed together throughout the week. Um, we're doing, uh, well, we were talking about smoking butts as kids, but then we, what we wanted to talk about were sports, fights. 
But then we were talking about what music we should play, and we were like, hey, let's do fight songs from marching bands. And I told Lou to get Arizona's. No idea that those are. I mean, absolutely. They all sound completely the same. I bet you, like a Nate Bargatze knows Vanderbilt's fight song. 1,000%. Like the notes. Yeah. G A F F A G G A B D minor E E E. And he knows the alternative, the alternate lyrics, the fun <laughs> one where he goes, drinking and walking in Vandy's way. <laughs> where he just knows where you're like, how much do you know these fights? Rape songs? banana, stomp banana, yeah. do that. Hey. And the volunteers, nothing but a pound of dirt. That was written in 1912. <laughs> he goes, go, Nate. <laughs> he just sings it to himself. <laughs> While he's doing the dishes, is this Vanderbilt? No, this is uh, Power of Love. Bring oh. up, oh, bring up Vanderbilt's fight song. I, I want to write Nate lyrics to it. I will go. Nate I lyrics. will go back to school, Dangerfield style. If Vanderbilt's theme song is Power of Love, <laughs> will, I'll I go will, to any school who's got will, Power of Love as their theme. I song. will re-enroll and get another degree if Power of Love is your fight song. <laughs> is this it? He goes, Nate is so good. I love Nate. <laughs> Nate, is Nate, so. Nate, 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 Nate. Nate is so great. Arm like a cannon, face like a model. Also, <laughs> looks great sideways naked. <laughs> uh, I, I used Decent to... hang, but not very big. My penis is average, makes, but it's good. Makes up for it with thrust power. <laughs> Throw my back into it. Yeah. Nate! 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 jokes! My favorite video game of all time is NCAA College Football, and that's just all they played the entire time. So I know fight songs, but I don't know who they belong to. I'll just be like, <laughs> it's bad enough singing to yourself, but it's worse when it's fight songs from. Someone made a joke about Nate before, so that's what's always happening in his head. <laughs> that's great. It's like a fucking fight song. Constant fight songs. Constant Vanderbilt fight songs. Yeah, I never. You were never a big college sports fan, were you? Out never, ever. Couldn't care less. Even I don't get it. Well, you know what? I get it for you. Yeah, because I went. You went to a college. Yeah. You went to a Division One university. But before that, growing up, I was a really big University of Colorado fan. I used to watch Colorado football all the time. So I was like a big Why? CU football fan. They were local. I think for me personally, <clears throat> because I moved to Colorado a 49ers fan and I wasn't a Broncos fan, it made me like a local football team. Something fo- uh, That's... Where I was right. like, that's a good explanation. Where it was like, oh, cool, I can get in. I was five years old, six years old, and CU was, by the way, at the time, the national champions. Yeah. 1991. So oh, so like, it was like also a great team. Locally. Yeah. I mean, I'm a front runner. That's basically what I'm saying. Sure. You know, I'm admitting it right now. I'm a victim blaming front runner. When I live with my, the short amount of time I live with my dad, uh, McKinley High School, which is where they play the Hall of Fame game. Okay. The football Hall of Fame. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah, in Canton. Um, when I thought if I was going to live there with them that I was going to go to that school, I, Got way invested in McKinley High School football, but that's like we go to the games starts. and stuff once in a while. And be like, oh, it's like a football high school football game, but I'd be way into it. Yeah, exactly. Because what would happen is you. And probably, I wasn't even in high school yet. It was just to go to the game. Yeah, but those guys, when you're a middle schooler and you see, or even an elementary schooler and you see a high school football game, it's might as well be pro. Might, you might as well. The guys look gigantic to you still. Yeah, my friend. It's actually his birthday today. Weird. Happy birthday, Scott. I Thank hope you, Scott. I hope you're clean, buddy. I'm just gonna, I just heard some rumors. I just hope he's all right. Is that talked, true? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in about 12 years. Uh, but his sister was like six years older than us, and she went to, uh, she was a cheerleader. She was smoking hot. Smokes? Smoking hot. Smokes? Big crush on her. She wanted nothing to do with me because I was her little brother's friend. Oh, yeah. And I, I was, was like, hi, sense. Sarah. She's like, get out of here. I'm like, ah, shit. Did you ever get to see her naked or anything? Nope. Really? Bathing suit once. Ooh. Great. Just yeah. great. It was a one piece and I was even pumped about it. <laughs> it was one of those nineties one pieces where it's all back and no front, mm-hmm. where the front's completely covered, but then it's like up the butt. You know, they like ride high on the hips and the oh, back yeah. is gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was still like awesome. Mm. But she, um, her boyfriend was on the Eagle Crest football team and they won the state championship. And I was at like the Stutler Bowl, which is where like my high school played football for a little bit. It's like this artificial, it's like a big thing. So when you're a kid and you're there, you're like, this is a stadium. 
This is the and then you know now as an adult I drive by it when I'm back in Denver I'm like oh it's a that's a cool high little high school stadium but as like a fifth grader I was like this is the biggest place I've ever seen in my life and her boyfriend yeah. was like starting on the football team and I was like nine years old so I was like this guy's my he's probably gonna go pro she's like you think his arms are big you should take a look at his base she, and I go what does that even mean and she goes oh god you really are a dork you know your little you know your peeper I go uh uh-huh. he's got a really big peeper I go did this does his stepdad kiss his like mine kiss his <laughs> she goes what, what's that Dan I go nothing nothing she's trying to be funny she goes I do you want me to call someone? Does it take his mommy a long time to clean it? Yeah. <laughs> when he's in the sink? She goes, do you still bathe in the sink? Yeah. I fell off. Uh, this is how big of a spaz I was as a kid sleeping over at his house. I rolled out of his bed and broke my... He had a bunk bed, and he was, you know, he, his sister had a different room, but he had a bunk bed, and he slept on the bottom bunk, and the first time I slept over his house, he was like, do you want to sleep on the top bunk? I was like, more than anything, and there's no guard, and my dumb ass rolled off the top bunk. Oh, Jesus. And hurt my my wrist. Yeesh. I came off right on my wrist. You know how... You know how shitty it feels when you have to sleep on the floor when, the, like, his mom came in and was like, here's a pillow and a blanket. Oh, God. One of my, my, what's your best floor sleeping experience? I could tell you mine. I had sex with this really hot girl named Becky at my friend Zach's house. That was pretty cool. Ah, that wins. Yeah. Yeah, right. It was pretty cool. I was like 22, though, when we were drunk. But I, uh, I had a girl. I was hooking up with a girl. Yeah. My friend Glenn and his Glenn! What, what became Glenn? Yeah, yeah. Glenn, still Glenn. <laughs> is he is he fucking Muay Thaiing fat girls in the head? <laughs> Same Glenn though. Same Glenn. Same Glenn. By the way, that was the segment for this show, right? Uh, if not, it was just on it was on this Monday. Week, yeah, yeah, but Glenn, anyway, Glenn came up. It's Glenn week on the bonfire. When Glenn started dating his friend, <laughs> it's Glenn Week. Glenn Week. If you tell me he stabbed a woman with a screwdriver, that's <laughs> ah, Glenn. He was trying to get pussy, ended up stabbing her with goes, a screwdriver. He goes, he tried this new sex position called the Frankenstein, where you jam her with two Allen heads <laughs> right in her neck. Connected to some fucking <laughs> like <a> charge pack. <laughs> oh, yo, you blow a girl while you're doing that to her? <laughs> Girl blows you while you're fucking zapping her neck. Yeah, you gotta light her up. We you go, you go, light her up. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta yell. Uh, uh. You gotta yell. It's alive when you finish. It's alive. <laughs> so Glenn is uh, hooking up with a girl who became his kid's mother. Okay. But this is we're all still teenagers here, and we went. We stayed at her house one night. Mm-hmm. And she had a friend Julie, and me and Julie were on the floor of the bedroom. Glenn and uh, Maria, his girl, were on the bed. Okay. And they were definitely, like, fucking around enough. You know, that it was like... All right, Sheets we were moving and heavy yeah, breathing. Yeah. Like, <sighs> so me and this girl were making out, and, like, I think I am uh, might have been dipping the digits already. Okay. Going for it. She, now, I don't... Again, I'm insecure. I didn't really sh- know if this was going to be, like, if this was sex for sure. Mm. And then she goes, uh, she goes, all right, let's fuck. She goes, just don't come inside me. And I was like, oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. Of yeah. course. I oh, yeah, got yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So I uh start, like, you know. <laughs> By the way, that's every guy's reaction to finding out a girl doesn't want to use a condom. She's like, don't come inside me. And you're like, of course. Don't be an idiot. Yeah, well, are you stupid? Why do you have a face? Oh, oh, my God. Do you have a brain behind that? Or am I fucking a brainless person? I've been calling your mouth a cum receptacle <laughs> all night. You go like this. You go, am I about to... Come inside a brainless woman. Fuck. You know, I just realized I'm going to come inside you. Oh, I just gave away the ending. Oh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I'm gonna. Bruce Willis came inside you the whole time. Um, so I'm like, oh, this is great. So I'm, I'm still taking it a little yeah. slow. I didn't just like immediately pull that dick or whatever. So I'm definitely at this point playing with her pussy or whatever. And then such a good slash bad thing happened next. Was uh Maria, Glenn's baby's mama. Glenn and Maria sound like grandparent names. They should be. Yeah. Uh, Maria's sister, Nina, who was so hot. This is all Jersey garbage yeah. name. It really I, is I, I such... Go, oh, your aunt Nina? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, but I'm saying yeah. like, oh, it yeah, sounds yeah. like Glenn and Maria and Nina. It does. Uh Nina, so hot. Yeah. Comes in to the bedroom, just barges in. So Glenn and Maria, I'm sure, stopped, like, fucking around at one point. She goes, Nina, get the fuck out of here. And then we just go, she does say something like that. And she yeah. goes, I'm sorry, I just need to come, come in for a minute. I just got to change something real quick. And, like, 
So me and the other girls kind of go back to yeah. laying, like, you know, like, so we were just Friday's a feather stiff as a board. Yeah, we're just hanging out. We're cool. Oh, just lay on the ground. We're just talking, talking on the ground. ground and she talking. goes, she goes, I'm sorry, guys, I'll be in and out. Wearing a white dress, yeah. like a party dress, tight. Yeah. Really thin, this girl. Okay. But great body. Lifts up her fucking dress. Yeah. Takes her panties off. Grabs other panties, puts those panties on, pulls her dress down, leaves. And now I couldn't be more like, now I'm ready to fuck this not Nina yeah. and pretend it is. You go, hey, guess what? You're going to be doing role play. Yeah. You don't even know it. If I can think about Julie, Julie was a cute chick, but we, she was known for being able to queef on command. So. I think that is, uh, first off, fun for parties. Very fun for parties. But also... She would do it, too. She would do it. She would give you a good... <laughs> She goes, so you, that, that sucking is the most she, amazing yeah. piece of science I've ever witnessed. She goes, she goes hey, Jay, you know what I'm thinking? <laughs> she goes, you know where I want your dick? Where? Follow the sound. Yeah. I'll give you a clue. <laughs> you be Kirby Bucket and stand in front of this wind fan. <laughs> You're going to drop a game set at home run. <laughs> The payoff of queef to this, to the, for the enjoyment of the sound it sucks in yeah. is never worth it. It's like, <laughs> you go, okay, all right. <laughs> but the queef's always just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to do something with your stomach yeah. and you just go, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's impressive she could do it on command. Yeah, so... Do you think she just shot her kid out when she had one? Like a fucking... I'm sure she had a like kid. Like a t-shirt gun? Maybe. <laughs> she she goes, like, is it time? Am I breaching? She goes, she goes, all right, you guys ready? Hold my hands. Someone go get a net. All right, <laughs> and then on the other side of the room. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> Fuck you, Mark! Boonk! <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. He waves everybody else off. I got it. Go. I got go. it. The doctor's back. Get out of here. Clear. Cleared out. Got it. I like the umbilical cord goes up like a gla- grappling hook. <laughs> what do you call that kind of a play? He goes, that's a routine fly. That's a routine fly. Just shallow. Looks like Julie's going to be shooting a baby out of her mother. So when she leaves Nina, I'm yeah. like, well, here we go. Now I'm ready to You're I was almost go. excited that, like, you know, I, think, I think my dick may have hardened up, and I was ready to be like, oh. Let's well, go. also, she did let's just, go present. like, I mean, that was, she went in there to be sexy. Like, you don't put underwear on. Maybe? Or she is just... She I, came I, and left, though. I'll tell you this. If she didn't do it to be sexy, then I'm worried about where she is in 2017. If she just walks in, she's like, oh, what are you guys doing? The I old, bet it ain't uh, good. You go, oh, the old bed floor combo. <laughs> All right, hold up. I'm sopping wet. I got to change up. <laughs> Darn out these knickers. And she goes, ah, nothing like a dry pair of panties on a puss. Am I right, people? All right, I'll see you guys All right, later. peace. See you guys yeah. downstairs. All right. <laughs> Bye, peace, sis. Peace, peace, love, and soul. You guys get your bang. <laughs> also, don't thrust too hard because the the floor creaks. So, <laughs> Hey, Julie, is that you down there on the floor? <laughs> No, oh, uh, hey. who's under that blanket? Jules. The, bl- the blanket gets sucked in. <laughs> yeah. It's a little tough. <laughs> hey, Julie. Hey, Jewel. <laughs> Jay, who are you in here with? Hey, she goes, Julie. Julie, I'll leave your lipstick on the counter downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, I forgot your aunt called an hour ago. Julie. I, thought you, I thought you were home already. If I dated Julie, without a doubt, within the first three dates, I'd make her blow out a candle with her pussy. Yeah. I'd be like, do it. Do Third it. Third date, you yeah. nerd. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you nervous after Nelly. dinner, after dinner I go, I heard something about you. How would you like to go back to my house? Put on some jazz. Light some candles. Maybe do some heavy petting. And then have you shoot those candles out with your pussy wind. She's like, well, if I can give you the short answer, it's. <laughs> she goes, oh, you mean like I did to the candle on the table? <gasps> That's what you did when I was in the bathroom? <laughs> you dog. She has a weird thing with her hands where she can, like, throw the queen. She a, goes, put the candle next to her. Put, she, it, put it to her right. Yeah, she does, she's an airbender with her pussy <laughs> wings. <Yeah. laughs> she tries to send it. <laughs> she goes, put this card in your mouth. Put this playing card in your mouth. <laughs> she was. Uh, what's the stock on that card? Three fifths? Oh, this is gonna be heavy. <sighs> <And then> you... 
<laughs> like sending it the air bending. <laughs> Remember the movie, the Angelina Jolie movie, where they could like throw yeah, their assassin. bolts around corners? Yeah, yeah throw their bolts around. Was it Wanted? Was it called? Wanted, that's what it was. He goes, bend, bend, <laughs> bend the corner with your pussy. <laughs> She's training out in, in some fucking remote Asian country. <laughs> you must use your mind to bend your pussy wind. Master, I think I'm never going to get it. You are going to get it. Open your mind and your pussy flaps. <laughs> No, Again. It's not working. Again! I want to quit. <laughs> it's the training montage from Kickboxer where they just do whatever the split <laughs> with the ropes where she's like... <laughs> and, and the big surprise at the end when she puts glue and glass on her pussy yeah. and it at yeah. you. <laughs> oh. But see, that if she would have gone to college, that would have been a fun college trick. Yeah, she may have gone to college. There I don't you know. go. Anyway, my, the thing at the end of the story... Yeah. Nina leaves. Yes. So I go back over... With, or I just kind of lean back over to her and I'm kind of like, uh, Dang. I was like, so, uh, you know, I don't know. Basically, basically you, where were we? Do you go, and did she, you catch that change up? And she, and she goes, uh, she quietly goes, she goes, I changed my mind. I don't want to do this. I was like, so I was like, and by, by the way, I'm not like never aggressive ever. Yeah. I, I'm, I feel like that's what was going to happen from the get go. But I was like, Oh, wait, what? I go, what? And she goes, Sad, I don't want to do this. Like, really loud. And you're like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> then I just left. I just fucking took off. Yeah, a girl saying that in a quiet situation is like when a child goes, I don't know who you are. And you're like, yeah, dude, I, I was just asking if you're cool. I <laughs> lost sleep, but I can't, like, she won't open her eyes. I'm trying to wake her up. She goes, teenagers, I felt, right? I just felt guilty. <laughs> hang up. <laughs> I thought, no, she she was like fucking like out of it. She was so smacked up. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying you this. You're just too busy. So she calls and says that. You're yeah, fucking teenagers. Am I right? Ain't it always the way? All right, Sue. I'll call you later afternoon when I get off work from 7-Eleven. Bye. Ain't it always the way? Yeah, come by for a Slim Jim. Her mom actually wanted to fuck my step-pop. Yeah. Real bad. Dude, Joe's got that body. Yeah, Joe has that body. Especially at the time, Joe has really fucking... That's what your mom, that's what, that was, that's what kept you and your, your mom and oh, Joe together. And a big old whacker. I mean, good for him. You know, it's obviously clear that your mom went for power and my mom went for speed. Uh, <laughs> 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 Moms of the bonfire clearly are a dynamic duo. Like, your mom wants someone strong on the land. My mom wants a Joe that's fast in the water. That's hilarious. It seems like our moms would have fucked us. <laughs> <laughs> I got, my mom goes, you know, Dan, you have a long build like a swimmer. I'm like, get out of here! Get <laughs> out! No, we're not doing this, Mom. That's Oedipus shit. <laughs> I would back off of that Oedipus shit, lady. Um, so, heroin calls, calls me. Mom. She goes, she back. That's great. She goes, teenagers, right? <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> I'm, 19, I'm 19, so you really kind of don't care, but I have a conscience, and I was yeah. like, I don't know what you want me to do, but I, I'm like, I'll come over and like, see if I can help at all. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going like, I'm like, I'm like, Nicole, Nicole, get I'm, I'm shaking her a yeah. lot. And she's not, and then she starts, but she starts doing like the, uh, I go, Nicole, are you ODing? Like, what's going on? Like, are you okay? She's like, uh, and I just shake her kind of hard again, and she, and you just hear, and I went, I'm out. I go, oh man, like, I don't care. Yeah. Just ripped her a, mom, I ripped a wet fart. I'm her, like, ah, her mom's in the, like, she's so gross. Her man. mom's in the kitchen making food, and you go, I got to get out of here. She goes, you shook her till she farted, didn't you? <laughs> Did she shake fart? <laughs> yeah, she goes. I mean, that is a sign of consciousness, but I, I'm still worried. She, before she goes, that's what made me call you. Yeah, she sleep farted me. She goes, you should see what happens when you squeeze her. <laughs> she's like a tube. Of, she's like a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> what happened? Did, she, she looked so bad also. You know what I mean? Like, she was what she was wearing and everything. She was, like, passed out, like, in just, like, the worst, like... You know what I mean? She looked like yeah. a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot so of on top of that, you're shaking her. And I've seen like, heroin addicts pass out. And then it's just like... It's not so that, just that loud, wet fart. You're like, I don't care if this girl dies right now. Oh God, dude, that's so funny. <laughs> like, I don't care. Yeah. Hey, sometimes you got to go. <laughs> go to the light. You go like this. You go, where is that needle? You start looking around. You go, hey, Nicole, I'm going to finish you off. I'm, I'm plugging my nose. I'm like, yeah. go to the light. Yeah, go, go to the light. <laughs> Peace await you there. <laughs> oh. Crossover. <laughs> you need a crossover. Also, I got to home anymore. I got to crack a window because I'm about to fucking boot. We <laughs> <laughs> need to wait you there. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm about to boot. I'm about to this boot. This is no longer your home. It's your time home. for you to cross over. How did you, was she, and you liked heroin, Nicole, more than uh, pussy farts? 
Well, pussy farts was just like a one hang. Night. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. That was, we we never dated, dated ever. I thought no. you dated her. No. Get out of my house, you fucking whore! There he goes. All right, she's on heroin, dude. But she was cute enough that she would like that. That Julie girl would fucking like show your sniz a lot, which was nice. Yeah, and she'd shoot wind and out. She'd of shoot it. wind out of it, which was cool. But heroin, Nicole, you dated for nine months. Yeah. What? And you did? Did you not realize during she was seventeen doing heroin? She'd already. It was her. It was her heroin relapse. Dude, drug use wise, that's going to the NBA out of high school. Yeah, I like. I like rock bottomers. Yeah. <laughs> Jay goes. I like to really pick up the ones that are dinged up. <laughs> How old are you? Seventeen. Any needle drugs? She goes. Oh yeah. He goes. What are you doing this weekend? <laughs> Have I got an electric daisy carnival in my pants for you? Yeah. He go. Listen. I need you to awake for the first half. Literally, that's it. That's it. And then you can nod off to wherever you people go. <laughs> anyway, I think I didn't promise you did heroin. Because it kept her in shape as long as she didn't heroin f- sleep fart on me. <laughs> one rule about my drug use in this relationship. That's it. I have one rule. Um, no wet fart. Um, no wet farting. Yeah, heroin Nicole was a... Uh, but Oh, so the thing was the second time and only other time that I uh, attempted or did hook up on Glenn and Maria's bedroom floor. Yeah, was with heroin Nicole. Heroin Nicole, but heroin Nicole, so with that lower centaur body... Yeah, she wore a lot of like tight shit where you could like see her underwear through. It was like it was really she was she was pretty sloppy. Oh, not like sloppy fat, just like a like she really gave off a vibe like who wants their dick sucked now. Oh man, that's always great though. Yeah, it's like operating a boxing at that age. Yeah, well at a boxing gym, it's like having a guy. It's like I just want to fight all the time, and you're like, oh, that's good. That's very unhealthy for your entire life, but that's good for this situation right now. Didn't like her pussy eating. Always found that weird. Uh, I've dated girls. Uh, that don't like it. That English rapper didn't at all. I find it so weird. I was like, I tried to go down on her. She's like, you can't go kissing me, really, pussy. <laughs> if you kiss me, fish taco, I've got to be mocha. I'm like, oh, God damn it, she's freestyling. <laughs> Get your hands up, my fanny manny. Ah, you touch my front butt and there's going to be problems. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please stop? Can you please stop my penises getting softer by the word? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gonna have my pussy on your face. No way. <laughs> um, I always think that's weird though, because you know you catch shit as a guy of like men don't eat pussy, men don't go down, and then when you do, and women are like, oh no 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 no, I don't do that. Are it's always guys? a bad experience. But I, think, I think it's based off of somebody doing it really bad one time. This is the, this is the question. I've had I, blow jobs, and I was like, if this is my first blow job, I'd be like, I'm not into them. I've had that in my life. Where there's, where there's teeth right behind the oh lip. Oh my god, I've got a real gnar. And it's, it's going off. He's up and down, and then you're like, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I feel like you're going to snap my dick off. Stop it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's have sex. Can we please just have sex? Can we please have sex? Have you ever had a girl brag? And then she about- has teeth in her pussy, too. She goes, I go, what are you? And she goes, safe at all times. <laughs> she goes, huh, I'm a dune worm. <laughs> Have you ever seen Dune? It's pretty much my puss. Um, I went to, well, before we go to commercial, I just want to finish this thing that uh, she was very tall. She had that real like big bottom yeah. half, and she's wearing super tight shorts. Okay, but like not jean shorts, but like a material that wasn't like super elastic necessarily. So it wasn't like volleyball shorts. No, 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 no. They were like tight, like like you'd go to a club in them almost. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. And she got on top of me. And pulled them to the side, the both, her underwear and jeans to the side as much as she could. Yeah. And really crammed my dick into her dry pussy with also on one side of it, you know, very tight clothing that's trying to get back over the pussy. Oh, she nodded your It was the most uncomfortable sex I've ever had in my life. Stop, stop, please stop. Please stop. Oh my god, I feel like my dick was bending and getting like, she goes, and getting Indian burned on the side. She goes, hold on real quick. You're like, are we hanging a picture or are we fucking? She goes, I got like a girl. I'm on so much heroin, this is the only way I can feel it. Oh, speaking, why don't we go, why don't we go cop right now? You we can probably go, find some on the street. You guys want to go cop? Do Times Square right now. I'll burn up. I'll tie up and push off before this next break. Fucks yeah. We'll be right back, everybody. It's the bonfire. Bye, boy. Bye, boy. Now this song's going to be in my fucking head. Damn you, Lou. It's about heroin. Is it? Train spotting the movie. Oh, yeah. And now, back to the bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-
That is the Notre Dame fight song. You know, it turns out I know it. I know. I just, uh, you know what, can I tell you, can I be real honest with you? I'm going to be very, like, friend honest with you. Mm-hmm. The only reason I know it is because we were singing it. I was like, I know this. I didn't know what it was. And then I saw the Notre Dame logo off the reflection of the TV, and I was like. Oh, no, no, no. You said Notre Dame. That's why he did it. You told him to put, do Notre Dame's fight oh. song. So that's the only reason I knew that, too. But it turns out I know the uh, Notre Dame. But- I didn't know it was Notre Dame fight song when you said play the Notre Dame fight song. I realized, like, oh, wow, I know that tune. Yeah. I th- there's a couple of them I think you actually know I think Rudy plays a lot. The movie Rudy. Yeah. So maybe that's why I know it. I'm trying to think if there's any other Rudy. ones you might know. Maybe USC's. It's very possible. It is the bonfire, by the way. We're back. Uh, yeah. This is the Lost Tapes. Uh, our first Thursday Lost Tapes. I hope you yeah. guys are enjoying it. Uh, it's funny because the way we do this, pulling the curtain a little bit, you know, we, uh, we piece, it's a little patchwork, but we, uh, make sure we get this out for you. And we come with an idea, and then very true to me and Dan Soder f- uh, fashion, we get sidetracked. So we've been playing uh, sports fight songs, sports yeah, fight college, songs. college fight songs. With the intention that we were going to have a whole show about uh, <laughs> fighting in sports. Not at all. Never got to it. Never got However, We did have a lot of fun queef jokes. We had so much fun queef. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot. Um, Learned a lot about Glenn. Um, I, this was a, this has really been a Glenn episode. It's, it's been a Glenn, Glenn heavy. Yeah, so maybe we should find our own Glenn fight song. <laughs> Glenn, 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 Glenn. You know what's funny I can tell you? Glenn, diehard college sports fan, Miami Hurricanes. Oh, Loves him. so Miami's and fight Georgetown, song. And Georgetown, when he was younger, he liked Georgetown basketball, but that was uh, he was a big Iverson fan before he came to the Sixers. Really? Which what was a cool, hipster sports move. Which is cool because... It made me half give a shit. He was like, the, we, I, we knew the uh, Sixers had the first pick. Yeah. In the uh, lottery that year. So he was like, this guy, they're going to get this kid, Iverson, who I just love. And he had a Georgetown tattoo on his arm, Glenn. Jeez, he had a Hoya? Uh, he had well, the, the G. G. Hey, no, it was the G also because oh, it was okay. Glenn. Yeah, there but it is. But he got it as like the bulldog, yeah. But then he became, for some reason, he became a, a Hurricanes fan. Miami Hurricanes. And he's like diehard. So. It's funny if you just start, like, uh, you date. Like Glenn sports, and I can just tell as being a college sports fan that they're like just good teams, and you're just like, it turns out Glenn's an even bigger piece of shit because he's a bandwagon <laughs> he's <also> jumper. A bandwagon <laughs> jumper. <laughs> you're like, oh, Georgetown in the mid '90s, and then he liked uh he liked Miami around the end of the '90s football team. Then he switched to USC, and he went to <laughs> yeah, Texas yeah. for a year, and it's like jumping around. You're like, he's just <laughs> covered shit. covered in tattoos of colleges he never went to. I go, do you have the entire ACC <laughs> on your left arm? <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, I was. The husky guy for he a goes, while. Then I, do, I do. I do SCC on my right arm, ACC on my left arm. He goes, and then I two hand jerk it and call it the bowl. I call it. Yeah. Oh, this is going to get in the cotton bowl. <laughs> oh, you in the copper bowl? Yeah. That's um, sports. Like I did that with Colorado. I loved Colorado, and then I went to Arizona. And part of my thought process when I went to Arizona, first off, it was out of state, and I wanted to get out of Colorado. But second, it was like, oh, they're not in the same conference. I won't have to worry about this because Colorado was in the Big Twelve. Arizona was in the Pac Ten. I graduate college, and then there's an announcement. They're like, Colorado's going to the Pac-10. You're like, what the fuck? Now, <laughs> now they're rivals? But I still like two colleges, so it can happen. You can like two college teams. I think sure. more so than sports teams, like professional sports teams in the yeah, same anytime sport. someone says that, yeah. I almost check out on considering them a real genuine like, like when someone's like, I like the Giants and the Jets. They go, like, my be- second team is, I go, ah, no yeah. Thing. Now, in my life, I've pretend at my very young years my dad moved to ohio when i was like yeah. 11 it's pretty young yeah so you're very influential so when i went out there i did embrace the browns okay. and did have a feeling in my head that one's uh afc one's nfc even at that age i'm going like so I, it can kind of be that's my afc team. yeah and i liked some of the players you know you got into it it gave me more to root for on a sunday which was kind of cool but my heart had no, just, you, you phase out of it because my heart wasn't in it at all. And exactly. then, uh, and then the other is, uh, when Dustin Keller and me became buddies. Oh, the Jets. And he was in the Jets. I can root for the Jets. I rooted for him. I, I really don't give a shit about the but Jets. But that's another parallel we have. That's an exact same parallel we have because when I was a 49ers fan living in Denver and I was like, nah, my uncle took me to a bunch of Bronco games. And I was yeah, like, yeah. maybe I'll like the Broncos as an AFC team and I have the Niners. But you're right. It doesn't stick. Because it was like, trust me, there were eight years where the Niners were, you know, two and 14. I mean, the past two years they were, but it was a time where it was easier to be like, it, this is how I know it didn't take. When the Broncos won the Super Bowl against the Panthers, I was kind of like, eh, all right. Yeah, like Super yeah, Bowl yeah. 50, I was like, hey, good. I was happy because my mom, my cousins, my friends I grew up with, 
they all love the Broncos. So I was like, hey, that's awesome. But for me, it's like when the Niners were in the Super Bowl against the Ravens, mm -hmm. it, and you'll probably agree with this, like when the Eagles are in the NFC Championship game, you're like, this whole day is just about my team. Yeah. Fuck anything else. And it's like when the Broncos were on, I was like, oh, cool. I'm glad they beat the Patriots. So yeah, I'm like, I don't. the game when the game starts. Yeah. 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 And it's like, and then I, I have, I carry no emotional baggage with that. No, when the Eagles were in the, even the Super Bowl in 2006. Yeah. It was the like pain. the week leading oh, up. Yeah. You're like, you leave ESPN in the background because it's all oh, they're talking Patriots. about. They're breaking about, uh, you know, breaking down your team. You love it. And you guys, you want to hear all the little details of it. I've, uh, even, I used to like listen to the Eagles live podcast like constantly. Like, uh, yeah. I don't do that anymore anyway, but I still have an emotional investment enough that when I moved to New York, I've had arguments with people where I've said, it, I've been here so many years Yeah. now, 16 years. How easy my life would be if I could just go Knicks or Nets and Giants or Jets. Yeah. And I just fucking can't. You I, can't uh, make yourself – you can't just go, well, this is my home team now. I go, something about – I'm attached to that jersey. I'm attached I watched, to that to that to that team. Like once you have a connection, though, it really is hard because you're right. Like the two weeks, if your team makes it to the Super Bowl, there's nothing better than putting on ESPN at any time of the day where they're just talking about your favorite team for two weeks because it feels like they're talking about you and you're like, I'm invested in this. This is great. There's nothing worse than when the Niners lost to the Seahawks uh, in the NFC Championship game because of the tip, mm -hmm. the Richard Sherman tip, mm -hmm. and then the pick to accidentally put on ESPN and they're talking about the Seahawks and you're like, all right, I don't want to fucking hear this shit. Yeah. So it's a duel. It's, it's like, you know, one way it's... No, the, you hate what you hate. Yeah. You hate I, it. I, like, I fucking hate Dak Prescott. Do you remember with, with when... A, I hate him as a player. And here's a story. I wish, I wish we would have told this earlier when Nate was here, but I remember being at your house for the Cardinals Eagles NFC Championship game. Shut me off. Shut you off. After the game you were like, "All right, no more football." And Nate and I were like kind of in the bag again. We wanted to watch the other game. We wanted to watch the uh the Steelers uh Ravens yeah. at AFC Championship game. And Nate's like, "I mean, what do And Nate likes all sports. So yeah. he can just watch whenever. He'll just watch the game. But I, and I wanted to watch the AFC Championship game. Of course. Game, but I totally understood where you were coming from where you're like Perfect example, the Niners, that when they lost to the Seahawks, I was at my friend's house, and they're Broncos fans, because the game before that was Broncos-Patriots. So we watched that, Broncos won, and we're like, hey, and then the Niners came on. If the Niners would have been first and would have lost, I would have fucking left. I would have been like, I don't watch the dumb Broncos. I don't know if you could find, uh, Christine at all, the video, after you guys left. Yeah. Brian Dawkins' press conference, didn't know, by the way, that was the last game he would ever play in a uniform, didn't even know that. But he Your favorite out. eagle. My favorite eagle ever. Yeah. He comes in and we he just We both like goes, safeties. Uh, yeah, he just comes in and goes, uh, he's like, ah, I'm sorry guys, I, I thought, I really thought this was the year we do it. He's a curse or anything, you know, he's like a very yeah, religious guy. He's the greatest intro of Madden of all time. Of all time. Of all time. I find, know it. Can you find Dawkins, the intro to Madden? Because- Brian Dawkins. That's when you and I started, what's that? What year was that the intro? Uh, Doesn't matter, it's Brian Dawkins Madden, Madden intro. Yeah. And by the way, it's also, I'll tell you, I think I want to say 2009, because Jay and I really started hanging out heavy then, because we were doing mandatory Metallica Mondays. Yeah. But also, we started on Guitar Hero, but also, I remember being at a comedy club and Jay walking up to me and being like, have you heard Brian Dawkins' Madden intro? And I'm like, no. You're like, go get Madden. Go buy it. And I was like, i got to save money, because I'm still a waiter. And I was like, i got two more shifts, and I might have enough to get. Because I had nothing. When I lived, when I first moved to Queens, I had an air mattress, two suitcases, and then my roommate's mom owned a uh, restaurant in Arizona, in a small town in Arizona. And one of the cooks was a meth head. And he's like, hey, I'm trying to get rid of my Xbox 360 for $100 with, like, three games and two controllers. And I was like, like, will you take a hand? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How about I fucking let you fucking get high on meth and I'll jack you off in your truck. I'll speed jerk you. Um, and that's so, uh, this is it. I'll crank crank. 2008. It. It's mad. So it was 2008. If you play Madden. Can you feel that? That thing is beating your dog on chest like that. Can you feel it? Can you feel what's about to happen on this field, man? Oh, it says it's not about who's biggest. Oh, that really ramps you up. Erlacher. Oh. Look at how shitty the graphics were. I mean, if you get that whole, go to Brian Dawkins' motivational speech, like huddle, huddle speech. Brian, Brian Dawkins' yeah. huddle speech, just in general. I mean, this is worth playing. He was the best ever. It's so he weird. Was, it's so I weird think to he's watch five him. foot nine, 
a hundred and like eighty some. Pa- I mean, what's he weird? Was a monster. What's weird about watching this Madden uh, intro is all the guys they're showing are retired or old now, cause or, or too- ended up being busts. Yeah, <laughs> or you're like, you're like that guy had three decent seasons for the Browns, but you look at it and you're like, oh man, like Reggie Bush out, Peyton Done, Manning yeah. retired, Ray Lewis retired. At the Absolutely. bonfire, SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Thank God Brian Dawkins ended up becoming an all pro safety because if he worked at any other job, you would fucking hate him. I if mean, he like, worked at Hertz or if he worked at fucking Safeway, what are we going to do today when that bread truck comes in? How are we going to load that bread truck? Loaf, bro, <laughs> loaf. And you go, Brian, I, I told you I'm hungover. I said how we going to load that bread truck. <laughs> that bread truck going to get here. Want the bread. Want to know what we're going to do with that bread. And you're like, shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other great jobs. <laughs> that fucking Brian work. Dawkins. It's the Christmas season. You got to stock these shelves. Yeah. People want their cookies. Yeah. People come to Staples for Post-its. <laughs> and we're going to have daggone Post-its. People come in here, they know exactly what they're going to get. Is this, see, we've got, yeah, right there it says new Brian Dawkins adrenaline rush beat. I mean, like, he was, <laughs> yeah. this is Salt Eats Factory. Yeah. We need salt on these teens. <laughs> what we do right here at Aura Spa is we relax people. <laughs> you come in here, I'm going to grab you, and I'm going to relax you. <laughs> Epinephrine or adrenaline. Oh, uh, it's hilarious. Epinephrine increases the rate. This is great. The heartbeat. As a longer term response to stress. Hold on. Cortisol Pause it real quick, Christine. Some Eagles fan goes, dude, I just had a fucking sweet idea. I'm going to take some Eagles videos and put <laughs> Dawkins to it. <laughs> it's like going to be like a the eggs. Yeah, I'm going to take the eggs and I'm going to take like a, an adrenaline video and put them to it. That's really great. Dang yeah, up. he was a uh, he was such a uh, beast. Now we have, uh, but one of the greatest. I tell you what's why I always one one giant I forever respect Jeremy Shockey. Jeremy Shockey caught ba- first off. Show that video. Jeremy Shockey catching touchdown on Brian Dawkins. He catches that touchdown, lands on top of Brian Dawkins, and just starts like like jawing in his face. I and remember I was, that I was, I was like, face the face. Was, like, was that a Monday night game or a Sunday night game? That was. I feel like that was a night game. It was a night game, and uh, and and that and and Brian Dawkins leveling Michael Vick. But when he come when he appears in the screen, yeah, he's like horizontal already. Like Who, Brian Dawkins, yeah, like he, he gave. There's a poster of Brian Dawkins. It's amazing of him, like. I forget, but something on the Giants he was tackling, but you're like, the guy's getting away. And when Brian Dawkins appears on screen, he's like in the air with his arms and legs. Like he just, he takes off and he's like, I'm going to catch this guy at the end like of this some, jump. Like someone hit box perfectly, or they're like on PlayStation, we're like box, and then you just nail him in Madden. Holy shit, dude. I mean, he was something else. But he wasn't, uh, wasn't dirty, was not a dirty player. Wasn't a, uh, didn't get in the fights and stuff like that. I think a very respectful what's player. He, what's Brian Dawkins? It's the punks that fucking, Brian, he's a, he's a Philly sports announcer now. Pretty oh, much. great. I mean, you know, he talks, I think, on a lot of things. I mean, he came back to, the, he did his retired thing in Jersey even after he went to other teams and shit. He went to the Broncos. He did? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was in the Broncos for a while. Um, he was in there for a couple seasons. Shacky wow. leaps over Dawkins. Giants would battle oh, the yeah, Eagles dude. with a playoff berth at This stage. is bonkers. Who was it? Oh, there it is. You just went by it. Back, back, back. Right there. Yep. New York tri- Eagles on a blitz. Collins lost. Terry right. Collins. He's got it. Right there, right? He took it right yeah. away from Dawkins. Yeah, I'll never. I, yeah, give me goosebumps to it there. Size, he has the tenacity. He's bold, dude. Says, dude. That's my ball. Dawkins isn't big. And Jeremy small. Shockey was my favorite guy that wasn't on my team because he was big, loud. He would drop his shoulder and knock motherfuckers down. But and then, then he'd go to a strip club. Like with the Vita Guerrero. The <laughs> Do you remember Vita Guerrero? Oh, ass. Yeah. Whatever happened to her? She's still around. Ass she was like great. one of the original Instagram. She popped back up. Did um, she really? Butt implants, do you think? I don't care. Vita Guerrero? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Butt implants is something I've, unless you get gross ones, same as tit implants. Like, uh, if someone's got amazing, great, yeah. someone's got amazing tits and it's like, those are implants. Like, who gives I, a shit? I would like to feel what a butt implant feels like as opposed to like a regular butt. 
It's going to feel good because they put it, they're putting it. But it's going to be like hard. No. Be like, it's, no, under, it's, 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 it's under the muscle. Well, no, it's not just that. It's um most of the time they're doing fat transfer now. Ooh. So oh, yeah, it's not even, it's ass. not an implant. Like I think it's rare that girls are getting implants. They're taking, they're sucking fat out of your stomach and like putting it in your ass. Now I'll tell you God, what. Uh, Christina, Christina, awesome. Christina doesn't have insurance, so we tried the couple times yeah. and we just fucking laying into her body shots. Yeah, you try to and, punch uh, it down. Yeah. It's weird though. I spent, I've a, seen I, spent it. A night the, I spent a night in the clink, but yeah. this is what I've seen fat transfer boob jobs and it's really weird because it just looks Google like when shit. girls have like Dude. like fatty tits instead of like nice I wanna tits. See, I want to see what they look like. I want to see what both of these it fat looks transfer like look like. So we want you to do it. Christine, yeah. so is going to fund your fat in, uh, your fat. I said it right now. Tips. All my money from season three of Billions is going to a fat transfer of titties. Because <laughs> if Jay's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> then, then Everybody's uh, happy. Every, Jacob's happy and Lou's happy. Um, now we're, uh, we're going to get in this video here about the, and we're going to talk about the, this video is like the most heated fights in U.S. sports history. I want to say, and, I'm excited to see this video. And I'll tell you what. I got disappointed all over again. Sometimes I see people like Steven Jackson and Ron Artest, and I'm like, why do I just fucking hate them with a pe- like hate them? Cause they, oh, hold on I real never- quick. The, that Steven J- that Steven Jackson Ron Artest fight. I was smoking a joint on the phone with my friend. I was with Patrice on the road. Me and Patrice were in, in Rhode Island at uh, Comedy Connection. No, Twin Rivers, cause Twin Falls Casino. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh whoa, that's a tough one. That's like the nickel slot place, Shit right? Gig, yeah, but back, oh. we went back to his room. I took a beating that in that room. It was horrible. I did all weekend there. And, yeah. I went back to his room and uh, and we watched it. I was on the phone. I was in Arizona. I was living in Tucson. I was smoking weed in my friend's room and they had the game on. Just happened to have the Pistons. The guy that owned the house was from Michigan. So he was a Pistons fan. I think they still had Chauncey at the time too. So I was like interested in it. And I uh, walk out and I'm on the phone smoking a joint with my friend Joey. He reminded me of this last week, and I go, dude, 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 dude. And he's like, what? I'm like, Ron Artest is in the crowd throwing punches. And Joey's like, no, nah, he's not. I'm like, this was before, you know, you could instantly see it. So he called me back later that night. He's like, I thought you were fucking with me until I put on ESPN. I was like, yeah, dude, Ron Artest just went into the palace crowd. And just- By the way, I get it. I get the, I get you're a man. You know what I mean? Vita like- Guerrero. I, oh. I get you're a man. I get people fucking throwing shit at you when you're on a court and everything like that. Sucks. And you want to deal with it. And the guy probably deserves to get punched. But I mean, like, there is some. You don't have to stand yeah. for that. I yeah. get you don't have to stand for it, but I yeah. just, the way it did, it just it was so embarrassing for everything all around. And, and again, I know it's an adrenaline fueled thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But well, here's like, the here's the video of most heated sports moments. And this is only they're saying they're going to make another part. This is part one. At the bonfire, SXM on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I um, I remember watching Dion Sanders and Andre Risen fight at the line. It was yeah. like 1993. Is when Dion was still. Uh, it was when Oh, it was 1994, because it was when Dion went to the Niners, and they were playing the Falcons for the first time, because they were both in the NFC West at the time, and it was one of those fights where I was so mad, because I was like, you guys are idiots. You have helmets on, and you're slapping each other in the helmets. But then you see someone get smart and grab the face mask and start punching under, and you're like, oh, get him. But there's also, like, I far more get the athletes themselves fighting each other on the court. I get that. Yes. I, I've been involved in plenty of physical altercations oh, dude, I grabbed, sports. When I played JV football, my, I think it was my sophomore, junior year, but there the was audience, a fumble, and I grabbed a dude's fucking nutsack to get a fumble. And he got up and wanted to fight me. I was like, of course you want to fight me. It's so all, gonna pile up and grab your balls. It's also a bit of the problem, though, is like <sighs> professional athletes come out now and have for a long time, like 19, 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're 21. Kids. Like they're kids, and they don't know. But I mean, like, it's pretty embarrassing. You some must of it, man. be embarrassed. But I forgot some of these. You gotta be embarrassed. You're gonna throw a bunch you're while gonna... you're on the court you're of a game. In on your job. You're wearing squeaky <laughs> shoes, and you're gonna throw a bunch. <laughs> hey, listen. You shoot a ball for your living. <laughs> Why are you gonna blow it off for some dick? You talking play, shit? You play a game for a lot of coin. Here, here. Let's, <laughs> That's what I with the tongue out, kind of like the. Let's, you should have all do the hoop for a living. Why are you gonna do that, <laughs> Jay? Hey, Jay. Why would you 
dude. <laughs> yeah, I love him. He's the fucking uh, best. I really, I love him. Good dude, fucking fantastic comic. Oh. He really makes me laugh. Just because we do it, <laughs> hearing him do it again, he goes like, ah, "It's why I love it." No, yeah. I do it because I love it. I want to hear yeah. him say it over and over again. Yeah, just because we do voices wow. of people. I mean, I think Doctor Phil is a piece of shit. Oh, but it's the only comic though when he does like the catchphrase. I'm like, wait, am I? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Don't people get him? Barrister. Oh, like, yeah, get embarrassed. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Uh, all right. Play this, play this. Yeah, I want to get through some. More, we'll more skim it. I almost want to just remind you of the events. You'll remember these fights. Uh, this is. Now, this is Ravens. Ravens versus, Saints. Uh, Saints, yeah. Steve Smith. Always. Steve Smith. Constant problem. Steve Smith Sr. I always love this. Uh, helmets off. And now this is going to get a now it's very funny fight. watching guys coming right out of a football play getting into a fight because it's like this is continuous it's like, it's like, it's like jumping out of out of a car and hoping you're just going to land on your feet yeah. fine and you realize that your body's still moving at the speed of the car when you jump that? so they get up and it's like they're fighting but they're all still like on like a, an emotional run like their body's yeah. still going in a direction oh uh, uh, what's this Broncos Raiders oh he ripped his chain oh uh, Michael Crabtree's tra- chain. Did that mean he ripped his chain off? Yeah, look. Oh. Is it my St. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> no! St. Bonaventure. Oh, wait. This is uh, Texas, Texas versus Baylor. Baylor. I watched this game live. Like I was watching this game live. And look out here. This is, a this is like the past year. year. And what happens here? This is just a melee. Where yeah, they just jump in and then both sides clear. Nothing happens, though. This is like, this video should be called Stuff Almost Happens. No, 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 no. There's some ones you're like, oh, yeah. All of a sudden you just go to I a forgot what, how many Japanese fucking, basketball game where a guy I gets stabbed I forgot how in many neck. fights fucking Shaq got into. Shaq, this is Jordan and the Jordan Pacers. and Reggie Miller. Oh, yeah. Oh, Miller came down hard. But, I mean, that, that got pretty fun. You forget, man. Jordan wasn't pristine. Dude, well, I, I mean, everyone knows that now. He had a gambling yeah. problem. I think he got his father killed. <laughs> Look at Horace Grant just trying to get in going, Michael, no! Let, me, those, ha- let me handle it. With those goggles? You don't hit a guy in goggles? Hold on. I had to put my science experiment on the side. Get but yeah, Jordan connected a punch. I mean, like, you know, then he's, and this was crazy. Yeah, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, no matter what he does, is bullying Bill somebody. Bill Beer. Whatever he does is bullying somebody. Oh, yeah. He's a giant, but he's also a kid there. He's like fucking 22. 19, maybe 19. Is yeah. He's on the magic, magic there. Magic's super early. But I do sort of get the adrenaline of sports having it happen. But the stain, I mean, the biggest stain to me and thing was that going into the audience and fighting. I don't even mind with those guys. Well, there's great videos where they go, can you believe what a piece of shit Bart, uh, <laughs> what was the guy on the Jets? Bart Scott? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, can't uh, wait. Yeah, but remember they were like, what a piece of shit Bart Scott. Like, you see as he's walking through the tunnel and people are saying he stays behind and like, is oh, jawing at them. Go- I go, That's no, great. fuck that. Because from the audience, you shouldn't, man, be able to yell down like hard. You can, obviously, but it's, it's you, you're a jerk off to do that. I think it's So great. whatever it is, but I'm just saying the fact that it got to a point where it's like, no, the jawing is great. Yeah. But the fact that Steven Jackson and Artes go in the audience and start fucking whipping punch. And well, oh, by the way, also punch the wrong guy. But, Remember that? Yeah. You punch the wrong guy. But my favorite is watching the faces of the crowd turn. When it goes from being like, fuck, oh, shit, they're yeah. coming right at us. Well, that's also the thing you go, it's, you know, I think at first, when it first comes out, you're like, fuck you, Bart Scott, uh, you faggot, you're such a faggot. And, they, and he looks at you, he goes, he goes, what'd you say, dude? And you're like, oh, God, he's, he, he noticed me. He goes, um. <laughs> Will you sign my jersey? Um. That's basically. You're a fa- and, then, and then this guy starts moving towards you, he goes, oh, God, this just became very unanonymous. <laughs> well, you know what? That's like, um, that's like on Twitter. That's basically what Twitter is. It where is. people are like. Twitter is. <laughs> Twitter is, you, you're standing at the tunnel as people are walking in, you're like, fuck you! Your mom's a slut! And you're like, hey, what did you say? And they're all, yeah! yeah! You know who I am! Yeah, but they go like this, they go, oh, big fan, I didn't mean my set. <laughs> yeah. Don't block me. Like, when people get blocked, and like, how could you block me? You're like, well, I think you probably said some shit. Oh, some guy didn't write back. I've done this one a few times, It's it's been said a few times. Yeah. On Twitter, but I always write back the same thing, and no one ever replies. Because just they realize how stupid their comment is. Yeah. Like it's always like uh, whatever there's a bonfire reference, and it's like catch Big J and Soder on blah blah blah. And this happened the other day, and they go, "How about just Soder?" And I just write back by himself. Yeah. I go, even if you don't like me, he's got to bounce it off of somebody. Yeah, just <laughs> like, talk to a wall. I mean, it's just. I, I can, 
I can't make I can't make a wall like me. I have to have another human you by cock, himself. You cocksuckers! I'm the reason we take any calls. <laughs> you motherfuckers! You ungrateful assholes! <laughs> I'm the one feeding you. He doesn't even have a screen on. His screen's not on. He doesn't want to hear and you. I'm telling you this. I think he's got wonky eyes. I can't even think he can see straight. But that's it's always that's the same. Like that was my favorite thing on Twitter, where this one guy was talking shit to like this British middleweight fighter, and he's like, "You junk, you." girlfriend's a slut like all this stuff i don't know exactly what he said the guy found his address and then the guy that was talking shit was like no i didn't no and that reminded me of the palace where like people started coming the players start coming in the crowd you're like oh fuck i mean they call the co- exactly that you're like yeah. cool it's like i just got your address i'm gonna come over and fight me like you're saying what a pussy i am and that you can yeah. kick my ass like but those be first people goes there's gonna be cops waiting here when you get here bro deontay the heavy, like, heavyweight champion deontay wilder there's this guy who was just on Twitter always talking shit about him, like the bronze bomber sucks. He just kept saying all this shit. And then Deontay Wilder showed up at his gym where the guy was practicing. There's a video of it somewhere. I'd have to go on a fucking internet wormhole. Yeah. But the guy gets into the ring and just immediately, De- Deontay Wilder just starts lighting him up. And then the guy dr- like drops the glove and runs out of the ring and then starts talking shit again, like almost immediately. Gets back on Twitter and it's like, ah, he's a chump. He surprised me, sucker punched me, and it's like it's on video that you're a piece of shit. So that's what it's like with those with those audience with the crowd fights where Bart Scott yells back, "Oh, is this a? Uh, oh, we're still going through the video. Oh, it's just playing in the background at this point. I, there was like, I mean, like there's all there's a lot of good ones. Like, like, if, if you move forward though, just like to recap and get back into the vibe of remembering that, like uh, the, the Pacers. Oh, what's that one? When people, uh, it's always crazy to me as a wrestling. That's it. That's, that's the big one. Oh yeah, that's what it is. is. There it is. Is everybody else familiar with this, Christine? You know about this? Do you guys know about this? In two thousand and four, two thousand. No, this is a stain. This is a stain. Look at this. I mean, on sports forever. Do you not, Jacob? You don't know what happened. So the look at that. Pistons and the Pacers were playing. I want to say it was two thousand and seven. I don't know if you can look up the date. I I don't want to be wrong about this. But it was two thousand six, two thousand seven, two thousand six. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Two thousand six, seven. Two thousand six. They. Um, Pacers and Pistons. Pistons were playing at Detroit, and Ron Artest had a couple hard fouls. Someone got ejected. Ron Artest laid down. Legendary, the... dirty player. Yeah, Ron Artest, Ron, he laid down on the scorer's table, and someone threw a fucking glass, like a beer or a glass of water, uh, on him, and it hit him. Here it is, right here. Here's the whole Pacers brawl. The malice at the palace. Yeah, the Good malice job. in the palace. I, I was. Lo- when was it? Well, hold on. 2004. 2004. Oh shit! All right. Oh four. I mean, it's so crazy. Well, you just turned it off. Yeah, I know, but she's got to kill this video. Oh. God. I th- legit thought she just brought up a Wizards-Bulls game. I was like, are you <laughs> playing the Bulls? And I go, oh, yeah, no, season's over. Ron Arch- There's a guy go back to the, the beginning. Oh, oh this, this is, is Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel, Kimmel talking about it. So, Whatever. dude, that guy that, that fucking faced up with Ron Artest, the fan in the Pistons jersey, I would love to know where he's at right now. So what happened is Ron Artest got hit with that glass of water, and then he just went into the crowd and started fighting uh, like, a guy. A guy. Not the guy. So he gets thrown, and then they show, and then it, like, Pacers and the Pistons started fighting. I forgot she was on that. He ended up not fighting the guy that threw the water? Wrong guy. He just hit the wrong guy. I mean, I'm like, I don't know the if the guy, guy that threw the water was even involved or yeah. beer or whatever it was. But By the way, that guy, guy should be ejected. I don't give a shit if, if security, remember, I don't give a shit if security beats the shit of that guy on the way out. I'm not defending the fan. I'm saying the whole thing was so Jermaine ugly. Jermaine O'Neal happens. lit a dude up who walked up and that's that guy that bucks up that he like comes down the floor and like fucking postures up to Ron Artest. And then I think it's Jermaine O'Neal just hits him with an overhand right. Um, I mean, it was gross, dude. It was so bad. I mean, entertaining as hell because you're like, wow, this is. But isn't that nuts. weird that that's like commonplace? Where, well, not commonplace now, but like, that's kind of like how our culture is now, where like people want to watch that shit. And they're like, oh yeah, I mean, I do. I- I'm way guilty. Yeah, way way guilty. Oh, there's a whole documentary about it. Oh, I want to watch that one day. I would love to watch that. Um, yeah. Was it a thirty for thirty? No. No, it says the Dan Patrick Show. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's just them documenting. It's like 11 it. minutes. Yeah, that, um, but it, there's never been a fight like that ever. With all, a bunch of fans it involved? It just went no. so completely haywire that you're like, but those guys go out there and just throw in like haymakers. They had to have gotten cheap and like the season ticket holders had to have been like, hey, here's a free fucking game. 
Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to do something. Because, I mean, that was the Pacers. They were like he was swinging on anyone in piston shit. Yeah. Ron He's Artest was going after it. Ron Artest and uh, Steven Ron Jackson. Is such a, a notorious scum. I told you about when he got on the train and changed the meta world piece. Well, you know, he, he turned over a new leaf. Uh, Still a jerk off. He got on the on the end train at Queensboro with like five of his kids, and I was like, I did that thing where I go, look at this Ron Artest. Like, oh my god, that is Ron Artest. <laughs> and he sat there with his kids. I was like, oh, should I just start whomping on one of his kids like it's the mouth? Of the <laughs> did you ever hear his rap? Oh, please bring up. Yeah, didn't we do that when we did the athletic, uh, the athletes' music episode? Man, Ron Artest? I don't know. Meta World Peace put out a. I'm talking about who just Ron Artest. That shit was gully. <laughs> gully. I haven't. Oh, this heard... is my shit. This was on one of the Maddens. This is the highest pitch auto tune I've ever heard in my life. Wait, this was on a Madden? Yeah. Listen to it. You won't even know it's Ron Artest. The lyrics are so. It's. Wait, pause it for a second. I swear to you, the 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 the, the, the cell of his lyrics are almost like. Uh, it's like bad bitch, booty stick, no. duty do, no. dinky bits, bad bitch, floppy tip, sabada, stank butt. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm in the spotlight. Oh, dude, the video is great. It's just him, someone clearly recording him. I just phone. think if you're gonna let me get this pace, I'm a rapper. I could do this. I could think that quick. Me uh -huh. and Dan Soder at the studio. But you don't even have to going think that back quick. and forth. With the mad flow, uh, got a microphone, a producer here, Christine's on the computer, don't have no fear. Oh, I think you need to get, uh, I, I think you need to meet up with Ron Artest and do a fucking album. It's just the shittiest, it's talking. But wait, I do want it, before we go, I do, Christine, you gotta get to the, the chorus with T-Pain, the auto-tune. A moment of silence? First off, you can't have a moment of silence in the middle of your song. Guys, let's be quiet real quick. Is that meant bleak in the back seat? I'm going to bring it up on my phone. I have it. You have it in your iTunes? Dude, this makes me laugh so hard. I don't know why the official version maybe doesn't have it or something. Wait, you seriously have Ron Artest's champion on your phone? Dude, this makes me laugh. But you have, like, that's in your iTunes where if you were to do, like, a random yes. champion might come up. Yes, we it is. Are Champion, we have a champion. Hey Ron, I have this like I've just been singing this like dumb song since you. Guys... Oh, you know what? It's the remix. That's what it is. Bring oh, up the remix, Christine. God, I don't want to hear. A, there's a <laughs> no, remix. I'm telling you the, the 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 payoff on this makes me happy. <laughs> I can't believe that not only you have Ron Artest champions on it, but you have the remix on your. Phone. I only have the remix. It turns oh, out. Oh, okay, good. Thank God. Featuring yeah, for T Pain. I'm telling you, T Pain goes. This is his highest decibels of. Auto tune ever. It really. It, why Are is we it, it? Why is it the same font? Hold on. Uh, why is it the same font as a dead black teenager's funeral? <laughs> Remember Ray Ray. Yo man man, you'll always be loved. Go back, Christine. Go back a little bit. I'm telling you, it's pretty quick. I only have like a minute of the song on my phone. Champion, I think you have the whole song and you're just lying now oh, that we called you out I'll on. Take, it. I'll tell you how long I have. I have the whole song. <laughs> but we're gonna get to this. Yo, Jacob's here, y'all. Don't worry about a thing. It's here, y'all. We are a radio. <laughs> we do the radio show every day. Call-ins, noise, sounds, and voices. Radio show, we're gonna do it tonight. Ah, uh, by the way, with this shit bullshit, you could always go back to, like, uh, the first word you said. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, don't worry, I never fell. I always stand tall. Yo, I never fell. Yeah. Like, why is that okay? Why are you... <laughs> I want to know where this is. I like jean shorts. Who doesn't? I feel like a motherfucking superhero, but you can call me That is ear piercing. Oh, you know it's not ear piercing. The sweet, sweet comedy of Dan Soda coming home to the Denver Comedy Works Thursday, June 29th through Saturday, July 1st. Get your tickets at dansoder.com. Uh, you can also catch me at the Dead Crow. Uh, I was going to jump in. I was going to jump in. I didn't know you were waiting for the next verse to start. I was like, yeah, you can catch Jay at the Dead <laughs> Crow Comedy Club in Williamton, North Carolina. He's a champion. 
July 7th. July 7th and July 8th. Go get tickets at BigJComedy.com if you're in the Wilmington area. Awesome club at the Dead Crow Comedy Club and Big J's coming back. The 7th and 8th of July, BigJComedy.com. Um, oh yeah, have a happy 4th of July. This is Thursday, so this is like our last show of the week. Our first week. First week. Good job, everybody. Been we have awesome. a bunch of friends come by. Um, have a happy and safe 4th of July. We'll be back live on the 5th. Back on Wednesday. Back on live. Wednesday. Monday live, and Tuesday. Uh, I believe off. live Wednesday and Thursday. We're on live Wednesday and Thursday. Yes. And then uh, if you got Netflix, we got, got that half hour special coming out. The stand ups. Uh, make sure you July check it out. July 4th. July 4th. And have a safe 4th of July. God bless America. And God bless you, campers. Crackle, crackle.